Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another lecture by Dr. Ronald J. Brown. Our topic for today is the wonderful American holiday of Thanksgiving. The holiday that makes us all Americans. Well, as you probably know, holidays are part of every culture, every religion, every ethnic group. Uh, and new holidays are being invented all the time. Here in the United States, we have Juneteenth holiday. Once again, celebrating a historic period, celebrating the African-American part of American history, which has been largely ignored by many people. And along with Martin Luther King Day and Kwanzaa, these are part of the African-American holiday experience. Holidays are important. They are educational. They teach us about African-American history, about religious history, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism. Holidays are also fun. Can't have a holiday without fun and food. And they're also educational and other aspects. Here again, they can be nationalistic. Fourth of July, everybody's flag waving, everybody's an American. I remember when I was living in Moscow on Thanksgiving, you could show up at the American embassy. And if you had an American passport, they give you a free can of cranberry sauce, which was not available in Russia. So holidays can be controversial as well. You can have forbidden holidays. For example, May Day in the United States. That was a day when the National Guard and the government of Illinois and mayor of uh, Chicago massacred a bunch of work workers who were going on strike. Well, we can't have celebrate a holiday like that in the United States, although the rest of the world does. May Day, who could ever imagine that the streets would be filled with women protesting May, uh, the, the holiday of Mother's Day? Well, what were they arguing? Women should not be valued as baby-making machines. They should be valued as women. And so Mother's Day was discriminatory against women who were not married, women who couldn't have children, nuns who decided to forego family and children. And so holidays can be controversial. Well, today our topic is it's not very controversial. It is a nice holiday, which has a very rich history. On the left, you see the outline. First, the history of Thanksgiving. Every holiday has a beginning. Then it became a national holiday. When and why? What are the messages of this holiday? First, it teaches American history. Pilgrims, uh, Kit Cod. Holiday is inclusive. Here again, it brings together all Americans. Third, it teaches us also that the USA is blessed by God. Once again, who are we giving thanks to? Fourth, the USA is a democratic country. Includes all people. And fifth, family is central to the USA identity. It is a family holiday. In fact, it is the most heavily traveled holiday in the American holiday calendar. It's always on a Thursday. Everybody is traveling Friday or, or everybody's traveling Wednesday and they're going home on Sunday. So don't go to the airport on Thanksgiving weekend. And then finally, the un-Thanksgiving movement. So after all, even Thanksgiving can be controversial. So let us get started on our exploration of this most American of holidays. Well, there are different kinds of holidays. 
As you can see, some are religious. Christmas, Ramadan, Yom Kippur, the Buddha's birthday, the various Hindu holidays. Holidays can be national, political, 4th of July, Independence Day, President's Day, the Queen or the King's birthday in England, the Bastille Day in France. Well, Thanksgiving is unique because it combines a religious and a national holiday. The goals of the holiday are solidarity. It unites people, all Americans, no matter what your religion, your race, or your economic status, you can celebrate Thanksgiving. It identifies who are Americans. What are our origins? What does it mean to be an American? It is educational. Kids dress up as pilgrims and Indians. Well, they have to learn what a pilgrim and an Indian is first. Thanksgiving is fun. It is food and dancing, fireworks. It is a family dinner where you sit around and talk with your relatives. Or you invite people who you don't even know. It is veneration. Don't forget, it is thanksgiving. It doesn't say who we're thanking. It could be Jesus, it could be uh, the Allah, it could be Jehovah, who knows. But it is a solemn holiday, giving thanks for what we have accomplished in that year. And it is inc inclusive, no matter who we are. A brand new person just becoming an American, just off of the boat, maybe only with a green card, will be celebrating this American holiday. Well, the origins of Thanksgiving. Well, traced back to the English pilgrims who came over in the 1600s from England. Well, who were the Puritans? They were, as the name implies, pure Christians. They were not given to frivolity and bad living. Even in England before they got here, they were so pure Christian that they allowed no music. There were no hymn singing and no organs or pianos in their churches. They were not allowed to listen to music. They were not allowed to dance or to go to theater. All of this was a type of activity that would lead us away from strict Christian living. No alcohol. The women were not allowed to wear lace or silk. No organs in the church. No statues. Pure, simple, good Christian living. Well, for that reason, they fled England because they found that living in England, surrounded by theaters, with wild women, with bars and cabarets on every street corner, women dressing up to the hilt, this was leading their children into sin. So they decided to migrate to America. Well, we know the story of the Mayflower. They went to Plymouth in England, they rented a boat, and they decided they were going to sail to the American colonies, which were part of Britain at the time. Actually, their goal was to go to Virginia, which was a little bit further south and nicer weather than Massachusetts or um, Rhode Island. But of course, a storm came up and they were driven off course and they ended up in Massachusetts. Well, like good Christians, they say, well, this wasn't a storm that deviated us from our path where we wanted to go. It was God's intention that we should not go to Virginia, that we should go to a place much further north and this was Massachusetts. Well, of course, it wasn't Massachusetts back then. In fact, there were just Indians there, the Massasoit Indians, where we get the name Massachusetts. Well, they landed at Cape Cod, 
and look around and said, basically, where the hell are we? What are we going to do? Well, they arrived on November 9th in the year 1620. And having come from Northern Pennsylvania myself, I know that November 9th is already into frigid winter. And Massachusetts is even further north than where I'm from in Northern Pennsylvania. And the weather's were weather was terrible. Storms coming in off of the Atlantic Ocean, snow storms, wind storms. Not a very good time to arrive in Massachusetts. Probably not a very good time to arrive anywhere, but there they were. God decided that they should go to what became Massachusetts. Well, that winter was horrendous. Large numbers of the people died. But luckily, there was a group of Indians, the Massasoit Indians. Some people say that the tribe was Massasoit and their leader was Massasoit. Well, the Indians took pity on these poor people, washed up on the shore in their big boat. And it was thanks to the Indians that they were able to survive the very first winter. Although many of them died, but enough survived the winter thanks to the Indians. Well, the Europeans knew nothing about what was in America or what to expect. The Indians showed them that this plant, which they had never seen, was called corn. We call it Indian corn because it has multicolor, but that can be dried and ground up and turned into a flour and make a type of cornbread. Potatoes, pumpkins, cranberries, squash, maple syrup, tobacco, turkey meat. This is what kept the Puritans alive during that first horrendous winter. And then during the summer, the Indians showed them how to plant the corn seeds and the potatoes and the pumpkins and squash. And they were able to raise their first crops. They showed them how to tap the maple tree to get the sweet sugar and turn it into maple syrup. They showed them where the cranberries grew. Cranberries were very important because they are filled with vitamin C. And without vitamin C, nobody can last very long. So thanks to Massasoit, here we see a statue of Massasoit, the little settlement that the Puritans were able to build managed to survive. Now, during that first winter, they didn't have these nice houses with chimneys. Most of them were living in caves or tents or would dig a hole in the ground and roof it over and turn that into their home. But they were able to survive that very first winter, plant crops that summer, and the colony took root at Cape Cod. Now, this is actual histo history. We know about this. We have all kinds of accounts. Don't forget the Puritans. Well, they were very puritanical. They also believed that it was absolutely necessary for a good Puritan to be able to read because they had to read the Bible. And so they were Educated and educating their children was a very important task because if you couldn't read the Bible, you could not be a good Christian. So Edward Winslow wrote his first account, one of the first accounts in 1621 of the very first Thanksgiving. Well, in the fall, after the harvest had been collected, the potatoes, the corn, whatever else they had grown, the pumpkins, the squash, they decided to rejoice together. They invited 
many of the Indians and their great king Massasoit and some 90 men. And for three days we entertained and feasted. And the goal was to give thanks to God for having provided them with the Indians to teach them how to live and to survive that very first winter. Another account was written by William Bradford, and he began, they began now to gather in the small harvest that they had managed to collect, started building, preparing their houses for winter. And so they decided that they should have a, a holiday to celebrate their good fortune. This is a statue of William Bradford in um, Cape Cod. We even know who was there. One of the um, accounts describes the 53 who had survived that first winter and summer. There were four married women, we know who they were, five adolescent girls, ages of 14 and 15, maybe a little bit older, nine adolescent boys, 13 young children, and 22 men. Very interesting to look at the list of 22 men and four married women. That means 18 men had no spouses. But this can be explained by various factors. We don't know how many women died because back then women died in childbirth. And uh, very often babies would be born and not survive more than a couple of days. But we know who was there. In fact, when they talk about, the Americans talk about being a member, a, a descendant of a Mayflower family, they trace themselves back to someone on this list. So we do know a lot about the first Thanksgiving. It was not a invented holiday, even though it is romanticized today, it is still a very important part of American history. <clears throat> So in the fall of 1621, they Indians gathered together with the surviving Puritans and they had their big dinner. And of course, until today, we always eat American food. We don't eat beef or chicken. We eat the American turkey. We don't eat white bread, we eat cornbread. We don't use white sugar. We're supposed to use maple sugar. We don't eat apples. We eat cranberry sauce for our vitamins. So the tradition is eat American food, celebrate this miraculous survival of the very first settlers who came over and established a colony which eventually became Massachusetts. Well, for the first good many years, Thanksgiving remained a Boston local holiday. It was not really celebrated that much publicly because it has always been a family holiday at home. So there were no big Thanksgiving Day parades or fireworks or anything like that. People simply gathered together in their homes and they had a big meal. Well, when the United States became independent, uh, and George Washington was inaugurated here in New York as the first president in 1789 on Wall Street, he decided to declare a day of thanksgiving. And he chose November 26, 1789 as his day of thanksgiving. Now, 
that meant that people would go to church. They would thank God for this new country. Had very little to do with the holiday of Thanksgiving, which was celebrated in the home. The day of Thanksgiving was a church-going day. Nobody really knows why he chose November 26, whether it was the influence of someone from Boston who said that would be a good day for it, or it was just a fall holiday after the crops had been uh, called in. But he declared a day of Thanksgiving in 1780. Nine. Well, periodically, there would be days of Thanksgiving decreed by the governments of a state, uh, especially, for example, if there'd been a hurricane or something, and they would uh, declare a day of Thanksgiving to thank God for the survival. It didn't necessarily have to be in November, could be most any time. But Thanksgiving remained a traditional Boston holiday. It was only in the middle of the Civil War that President Abraham Lincoln declared that Thanksgiving should be a national holiday. The goal was to unite the North and the South in a holiday that could unite all Americans. Don't forget the Civil War was a disaster for the United States. Entire cities were born. Um, many languages call a civil war a brother's war, meaning two brothers would be fighting against each other. You had many families, one branch of the family in the North, one branch of the family in the South, fighting. My family was in southern Pennsylvania during the Civil War, and we had ancestors who were killed in the Civil War. In fact, they were doing some archaeological work in southern Pennsylvania, and they discovered the casket of one of my ancestors who had been killed during the Civil War. It tore the country apart, and so Abraham Lincoln decided that we needed a holiday to unite Americans, to bring them together. Well, gradually, the school system found that this was a nice holiday. It was not over overtly religious. Yes, we're giving thanks, but you can give thanks to your own particular God. And so the holiday started spreading as the public school system started growing in the late 1800s. And kids would dress up as Puritans, they'd dress up as Indians, they'd dress up as turkeys and uh, all kinds of other things. So they'd have a turkey, a little plastic turkey, they would have pumpkins and Indian corn. And so it became part of the educational system. Here again, a nice way to teach American history, teach the origins of American culture up in Massachusetts, teach them a little bit about the Puritans and about the happy relations which existed at that time between the Native American Indians, the Massasoits, and these new arriving Europeans. So gradually, this new holiday began to take root in the school system. More and more families started uh, celebrating it. Various states declared it a state holiday. Eventually, um, uh, schools were let out for the holiday. Um, um, and it started really growing, not just as a Massachusetts holiday, but as a national holiday. Well, a big step occurred in New York when Mr. Macy, who had founded Macy's department store in 1858, uh, decided to celebrate 
this growing holiday with a big parade. This was 1924, the Roaring 20s. Well, everybody had money. And so he built his big new Macy's department store in 1902. And then in 1924, he held his very first Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. Well, it went down 8th Avenue and then down Broadway, and it ended up right at the front door of Macy's department store. Well, what was his goal here? Well, join the parade, see the turkey, and go down and go shopping. And so it was a publicity device. Sure, there are turkeys and floats and everything. Uh, it was definitely a Thanksgiving parade. But he added one final touch. The last float in the parade was going to be Santa Claus. So the message of the Thanksgiving Day Parade is grab your credit cards and your bag full of money go to the Thanksgiving Day Parade, follow it down 8th Avenue and Broadway, and when you get to the front door of Macy's, go in and shop until you drop. So Thanksgiving became not just a family holiday, it started being a holiday the very first day of the Christmas shopping season. But yet it was a Thanksgiving Day parade and turkeys and all kinds of stuff, but the goal was start shopping. So the great shopping season began. Well, of course, Black Friday after Thanksgiving, where everybody goes dashing into department stores stampeding each other. Um, huge sales come in and go shopping. In fact, some people are even starting to open their stores right after the parade. So you can go in the Macy's, you can go into all the stores in Manhattan and start running up your credit card. The day after that weekend is, of course, Cyber Monday, when buy all of your electronics online. So Thanksgiving has sort of lost a lot of its more solemn historical um, approach, but yet it still remains very prominent on the calendar nationwide, meaning shop, shopping season of Christmas is beginning. Well, for quite some time, it wasn't really fixed which Thursday in November it should be, because sometimes there are five Thursdays in November. When the first day of November is a Thursday, the last day is also a Thursday. So it was President Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1941 who decreed that Thanksgiving shall henceforth be celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November. Usually it's the last, but not always. So it is the fourth Thursday, and it became officially established as the date for this great holiday. Well, it remains not just a day of shopping in the stores around the world, or around the country, but it is also the premier weekend of travel. 42 million people traveled 50 miles or more from home during the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. And this is 2012. You can imagine what the, um, um, the dates or what the numbers would be going up until today. But since Thanksgiving is a Thursday, 
Everybody is going to travel that Wednesday, possibly that Tuesday night. And they're all going to return Sunday. So there's really no week-long period for Thanksgiving. As there is for Christmas, places close down early, and then there's nothing going on during the week following Christmas leading up to New Year's. So the Christmas holiday season is spread over a week, if not two weeks. But Thanksgiving is crammed into a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And don't go to the airport the Sunday after Thanksgiving, because if the weather is lousy, then you will never get your flight. So that's a little bit of how Thanksgiving emerged as a little Boston local holiday and became a national holiday and then just grew in importance um, until it became one of the most important American holidays. Now, what are the messages of Thanksgiving? First, it teaches about early American history, the Puritans. It teaches that Indians and white people and everybody else can get along together. It teaches that the USA is blessed by God. Yes, don't forget, we are giving thanks to God for the survival of these first Americans. The USA is a democratic country. And finally, the family is central to American culture. It is mom and dad and the kids with the grandparents. This is superior to women having babies and single mothers and uh, all kinds of other uh, arrangements with children. It teaches that the mother, the father, and the kids and the grandparents and the aunts and uncles and cousins is the fundamental building block of American society and a stable society. Well, in teaching about early American history, uh, the, the monument which you see on the right is a later, reconstru later construction to commemorate the spot where people believe the pilgrims first set foot on America. Paintings showing them stepping onto the very first rock in fact, the rock which you see in the picture was drug in from somewhere, 1626 was carved into it, and um, uh, tour guides uh, will swear on a stack of Bibles that that is the actual stone where the very first pilgrim walked. Well, all of this is sort of silly and sort of kitchen, probably not historically accurate, uh, but yet, it is teaching the story of the first pilgrims. So it is educational, talking about the founding of Cape Cod in Massachusetts, survival with the aid of the Indians. The first settlers were good people. They were not massacring the Indians. They got along well with them. They were religious. They had a day of thanksgiving to thank God for their survival. And they came to America to escape religious persecution in England. So America is a land of religious freedom. And so in the many books, such as Cranberry Thanksgiving, a children's book on Thanksgiving, there are all kinds of movies, uh, National Geographic, 1621, New Look at Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving book, a how-to book, how to celebrate Thanksgiving, what to eat, what to wear, why the holiday is important, even a history of the holiday as it emerged. So the holiday is educational. This it teaches early American history, and it communicates the message that even if your ancestors just stepped off of a jumbo jet at JFK Airport and you are brand new to the United States, still you are part of this ancient history. You can consider the pilgrims, 
the Puritans as your ancestors as well. Well, the second message is that Indians and white people can get along together. Miles Standish, who was the leader of the pilgrims, got along well with Massasoit. There was no white people murdering Indians. They sat down, they smoked the peace pipe, they communicated through an interpreter somehow, and they sat down and had a nice celebratory dinner. Well, this idea of the Native Americans and the white people getting along together became a symbol for all Americans who came in later. That just like the Indians and the Puritans got along, well, so the Irish immigrants coming in in the 1830s, the German immigrants in the 1830s, 40s, and 50s, the Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe in the 1880s and 90s, they also were welcomed in to this new country by way of the thanksgiving. They too had a lot to be thankful for, surviving their passage across the Atlantic for surviving assimilation into American society. So the message of Thanksgiving is we are all pilgrims, whether we are from Africa and our ancestors were slaves, whether we are Asians coming over in the 1970s, or whether our ancestors came from Ireland or Germany or Russia back in the middle of the 1800s, we can all identify as the participants in this first great American holiday. Shortly after Abraham Lincoln declared it a national holiday, Thomas Nast, a German immigrant uh, who was an illustrator for magazines. Back in 1869, you couldn't put photographs into newspapers. People made drawings in ink and they were could be reproduced in newspapers. So Thomas Nast made this drawing, Uncle Sam's Thanksgiving dinner. Well, 1869, the Civil War is over. African Americans, the whites of the South, could join with the whites of the North. Uh, once again, part of the same country, equal and free. But look, Thomas Nast included even more. Right on the front, you see a Chinese man with his wife, uh, children, you see Spanish woman. You see on the left, African Americans. There's a Native American with feathers in his head. And you see white people, fat, white businessman from Wall Street. And on the wall, you see the pictures of Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Ulysses S. Grant overlooking the table. In the upper right-hand corner, you see come and you see a picture, you can't see it very well, but this is the New York City Immigration Center. Today it's Castle Clinton at the bottom of Manhattan. Because in 1869, there was no immigration center on Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty wasn't there. So the immigrants came directly to Manhattan to this big round fort at the bottom of Manhattan. And that was the New York Immigration Center welcoming new immigrants. So this was a holiday, not just for Indians and white people, but by extension, millions of immigrants flooding in to the country. They were all equal Americans. Well, this myth of an ancient ancestor, some founding event, which has become sort of the founding experience of a people. Story of Adam and Eve in the Bible, the ancient Babylonian legend, 
which was incorporated into the Jewish Bible and which is accepted by Jews, Christians, and Muslims until today, traces all of humanity back to a founding experience in the Garden of Eden. Beside that, in the upper right, you see Abraham. What does the word Abraham mean? It means the great ancestor, coming from the Hebrew Abba. Whether there was an Abraham or not, nobody really knows. We have no proof one way or the other. But according to the Jewish Bible, he founded a great nation. His descendants became a great people. The Japanese believe that the first emperor of Japan was the, the child of the sun god. And all Japanese are descended from the first humans created by the sun god. So this is the myth of the great ancestor, whether it's Abraham or Adam and Eve or the sun god. Um, this is where it all begins. And so Thanksgiving holiday is viewed as the ancestor founding experience of the American nation. Indians and white people getting along together, surviving against great hardships and welcoming hosts of other people after them. The third message of Thanksgiving is that the USA is blessed by God. In fact, the Puritans firmly believed that God had brought them to Massachusetts. Even when they wanted to go to nice, warm Virginia, God told them, no, I want you to go to Massachusetts. And John Winthrop, who was the governor from 1629 to 1649, you see his picture there, once again, Indians getting along well with the Puritans. He said, God brought us hill for, here for a purpose. We are to build a new society, a utopia, a perfect society. And we have to be serious about this because we are a city high on a hilltop and the eyes of the world are watching us. And so this notion that the United States is more than just some dumpy little country somewhere. It was founded by God with a special purpose. So we were different. God didn't establish England or France or China or Zimbabwe or Brazil. They were founded by humans, but it was God who founded America. And that explains why we have on our dollar, put on by President Eisenhower, in God we trust, we have in our Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God. And even the great seal, which you see at the right on your dollar bills, it said, Anuit Conceptis, meaning God has approved of our effort to build a new country. Novus Ordo Seculorum, a new creation, a new order for the ages. And so this is really what the United States was all about. We had a mission from God, and this was brought by the Puritans. John O'Sullivan, a great journalist in New York City, wrote in 1845 the concept of manifest destiny, that the United States was destined to expand from Massachusetts and Virginia along the Atlantic coast, the whole way across the continent to the Pacific. Whether it was through buying the Louisiana Purchase, stealing Texas and California from Mexico or any other way, it was God's wish that the United States should expand across the continent. 
we were God's special country. We were the chosen people, and America was the new promised land. The American victories in World War I, World War II, the victory over communism, were all viewed as victories given to the United States with the help of God. This is our destiny. Sort of sounds like Donald Trump and the evangelical Christians on the right, and in many ways it is. Uh, make America great again. Why? Because we have a divine mission. Many people even say we should take the stars off of the flag and put on the Christian cross. The United States is a country blessed by God. The fourth message of the Puritans and of Thanksgiving is that the United States is a democratic country. Even before the Puritans left their ship, the Mayflower, they confronted the question of building a government. On the left, we see the Mayflower Compact. Compact means an agreement which they wrote up on November 11, 1620, just days after they had arrived. And they argued, what kind of government are we going to have? Are we going to elect a king? Are we going to have an army ruling over us? What kind of government are we going to establish in this new place? Well, the Mayflower Compact is viewed by many as the first American democratic constitution. It begins in the name of God. And it says we are undertaking a very important uh, job. And we covenant, we agree and combine ourselves together in a civil body politic. We have combined us, we combine ourselves into a political organization. And why are we doing this? For the better ordering and preservation and furtherance of our survival. Meaning we are doing this to survive and to carry out the wishes of God who brought us to this new place. And so we enact, constitute, and frame. We draw up just and equal laws, ordinances, rules, acts, constitutions, and offices. And this will be our government. And so it was a group of people establishing their independence, establishing laws and rules for the good ordering of their new community in the new country. And so the Mayflower Compact is viewed as the first American constitution organizing democratic government drawn up by the people, not imposed upon them by the king, not imposed upon them by some god up in heaven, but they drew it up themselves for the peaceful ordering of a new society. Well, these ideas were brought into other parts of American history. For example, the Declaration of Independence called for freedom, the right of the people to decide their future. Later on, the Constitution would enshrine freedom of press, freedom of religion, the rules for voting. Eventually, political parties would emerge from all of this. And 
The goal was liberty and freedom and the good ordering of this new American society. Both the Constitution and the Bill of Rights looked back to the origins of American democracy and freedom in Massachusetts among the Puritans. Well, according to the Constitution and most Americans, this first democratic organization of the Puritans, later the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and then the Constitution and Bill of Rights all refer back to the people. Constitution says, we the people of the United States of America. Here again, it is not democracy given to us by the king, but it is a democracy which we ourselves have chosen to develop. So that proves in the eyes of many people that the United States was a unique democratic experiment that could have failed, but yet by sheer luck and the help of the Indians and good organization, this new country survived. Which is one of the reasons why during Thanksgiving, we do not eat European food. We don't drink French wine. We eat American food, pumpkin pie, cranberry sauce, baked potatoes, turkey. This is what we eat, only American food, to show that we are different from these ancient monarchies in Europe, that we are a democratic and a free people unique in the world. The fifth message of Thanksgiving is the power of the family. Norman Rockwell, famous illustrator and painter, painted his vision of Thanksgiving. And when you look at the picture, you see that there's grandmother and grandfather, grandfather sitting at the head of the table, grandmother bringing in the turkey. Right beside grandfather, you see this little head of a little kid and a teenager, an older man and a woman. On the right, you see a gray-haired old woman. That must be great-grandmother who's at the dinner table as well. This is the ideal family, mother, father, and the kids. And this message of the family is central to every aspect of Thanksgiving. It is a family holiday. Now, still, some people do go to a restaurant because they're too lazy to cook the turkey, or like me, they hope to be invited by somebody. But still, the core is the family. That's why all the college kids dash home on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, or sometimes just arriving thir Thanksgiving Day morning, just in time for the big Thanksgiving dinner. And then taking Friday and Saturday to recuperate from too much food and alcohol, and then dashing back to where they are going to school in, uh, on Sunday. In fact, portraying Thanksgiving as family is in pictures. Once again, you see the family praying. Um, you see cartoons portraying once again Donald Duck and his family unit celebrating Thanksgiving. Even cartoons show the humorous aspect of Thanksgiving, always with the turkey, always with American food. So Thanksgiving is very much associated with the traditional family showing that abortion, single mothers, gay marriage, really are marginal to the message of Thanksgiving. 
It is mother, father, and the children. It is the family unit. And this is very strongly supported by a lot of more conservative people. Other people say, no, it can be uh, any family, a mother with six kids uh, or two guys with some adopted kids or two women with a couple of kids. Uh, these can also be included. But Thanksgiving does have a more conservative message that it is family oriented. Well, those are the messages of Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving is controversial after all, not just because it is family oriented uh, and many people consider it discriminatory against single women with a bunch of kids or gay and lesbian marriages. But Thanksgiving is also becoming a little bit more um, controversial. And there is what many people have now named the unthanksgiving movement, calling the portrayal of Thanksgiving, as we see in the picture below, the happy Indians and American settlers getting along well. Many people say, yes, well, maybe on one day the Puritans and the Indians got along well, but as the Puritans and other white settlers started moving inland, it resulted in the genocide of the Native Americans. That even the Puritans later on had fallen out with the Indians and ended up waging war. Once again, believing they were doing God's job, it was to expand, to take over the continent. And if the Indians stood in their way, they were to be exterminated. So you get this whole cowboy and Indian reality as opposed to that one day Thanksgiving myth that everything was happy between the Indians and the settlers. Many people say that the holiday of Thanksgiving should really become a day of mourning. You see the plaque, which is put up in 1970 in Plymouth, saying that Native Americans have, for many years, since 1970, gone to Plymouth not to celebrate Thanksgiving, but to remind the people of the genocide of millions of the Indians, the theft of their land, and the destruction of their cultures. And we see this uh, plaque, which is erected by the town of Plymouth on behalf of the United American Indians of New England in 19. 1970. So there has been a movement to make Americans aware that not just Thanksgiving, but expanding across the continent ended up in horrendous war crimes against the Native Americans. And that Thanksgiving should no longer be celebrated. It should be ended and National Day of Mourning should be instituted, whether on the day of Thanksgiving or another day. On Thanksgiving Day, 1975, when the Indians occupied the Alcatraz Island off the coast of San Francisco, demanding a return to their lands, reminding Americans that even Plymouth was Indian land controlled by the Massasoit tribe before the Puritans came in and stole it. So Thanksgiving, like Columbus Day, is undergoing a major revision. Should we be celebrating these? Was it a time of happiness between the white people and the Indians, or was it the beginning 
of a mass genocide of the Native Americans. Posters such as these, genocide, poverty, hungry, no thanksgiving. What are we celebrating? We are celebrating genocide, poverty, and hunger. On the island of Alcatraz in 1975, a major unthanksgiving day is being celebrated on what the rest of Americans are celebrating as Thanksgiving Day. So holidays can be controversial. We tend to ignore the other chapter of what we are celebrating. For example, the French Revolution, when they celebrate uh, July 14th, the storming of the Bastille. It also ended up being a horrendous time of persecution of Catholics in France. So many Catholics view French independence as a time of crimes against the Catholic Church. Israeli Independence Day is celebrated by Palestinians as a day of genocide. When the Israelis took over Palestine, exterminated, expelled, and persecuted millions of Palestinians, depriving them of a homeland. And so how we interpret holidays, what they mean, the, mean, the, the ongoing meanings of holidays. Should Christopher Columbus be celebrated as the man who discovered America? or the man who began the genocide of the Native Americans. So holidays are controversial. Mother's Day, should we be celebrating motherhood or should we be celebrating all women? So holidays are a fascinating topic to explore. So on that note, I will thank you for joining me. Once again, ronbrownmedia at gmail.com. Feel free to contact me if you have something you'd like to add or to correct. That's me again in Lower Manhattan. Not celebrating a holiday, but holidays, once again, are important. Like the book on the right, let's celebrate special holidays around the world. You see the importance of holidays constantly inventing new holidays like Juneteenth, uh, uh, celebrating certain holidays uh, for a religious group or an ethnic group in New York. It's so important for every ethnic group to have a New York City holiday, whether it's the von Steuben German Parade, St. Patrick's Parade, Salute to Israel Parade, Muslim Day Parade, here again, holidays are extremely important. So once again, thank you for joining me today. And I hope to see you in the near future for another exciting exploration of some fascinating topic. So this is Dr. Ronald J. Brown signing off. Again, thank you for joining me. And I hope you enjoy your next and upcoming holiday. Goodbye.